Hello, dear children. I welcome you to the radio learning program. And it's produced by Rwanda Education Board with support from UNICEF. This is Teacher Mary. I'm going to teach you social studies for P6. So our parents, thank you so much for supporting our children. We really appreciate you. So children, hope you're ready for today's lesson. Do you have your notebooks ready? Are you ready for the lesson? Okay, thank you. I hope you're ready now. So can we do a recap of what we learned in the last lesson? What did we learn? So we learned about natural resources. We learned about natural resources and we said there are things in our environment that are not man-made. For example, vegetation, wild animals, land and soils, minerals, water resources like rivers, lakes and oceans. And that is what we looked at in the last lesson. Let's have a short break and we continue. Welcome back. So today, we are going to learn about people of East Africa. People of East Africa. And the topic can be found on page 203 of P6 SST textbook. You can check on page 203 of P6 SST textbook for today's topic. Let me share with you the learning objectives of today. You will be able to identify major ethnic groups in East Africa. That is one. And you'll also be able to differentiate between immigration and immigration. So those are the learning objectives that we have for today's lesson. So now this brings me to this question. What are the major ethnic groups in East Africa? Mention the major ethnic groups of East African countries. What are they? Okay, so we need to know East Africa is made up of many ethnic groups. So now we need to know what an ethnic group is. An ethnic group is a group of people with a similar language and culture. Ethnic group is a group of people with a similar language and culture. So people who have the same language and they have the same culture, they are in one ethnic group. So we have already said that East Africa has so many ethnic groups. So the people of East Africa belong to different ethnic groups. So these are the major ethnic groups that we have in East Africa. Can you write them down? So one, Bantu. Bantu. Two, Nilotics. Two, Nilotics. Three, Hamites. Three, Hamites. And Nilo Hamites. So those are the major ethnic groups. We have the Bantu, Nilotics, the Hamites, and Nilo Hamites. So these ethnic groups came to East Africa from different directions. They came to East Africa from different directions. So we are going to look at all the different ethnic groups and also the examples of the tribes that we find in those different ethnic groups. And we have mentioned the four of them, the Bantu, Nilotics, Hamites, and Nilohamites. So to start with, we shall begin with the Bantu. So Bantu is the largest group in East Africa. So they include the Banyarwanda and Barundi. They are included in the group of Bantu. The Basoga, Baganda, and Banyankoli are of Uganda. Then, the Sukuma and Nyamwezi of Tanzania. And also the Gikuyu and the Akamba of Kenya. Can I mention them all? So we said the ethnic group is the Bantu, where we have the Banyarwanda and the Barundi. We also have the Basoga, Baganda and Banyankole of Uganda. Then we have the Sukuma and Nyamwezi of Tanzania, and also the Gikuyu and Akamba of Kenya. And these are not the only tribes that we find in the Bantu. I've just given a few examples. So there are so, other, there are so many other tribes that we can find 
in the Bantu ethnic group. So the second ethnic group is the Nilotics. This group got their name because they believed to have entered East Africa after traveling along River Nile. So these people got their name Nilotics because they entered East Africa after traveling along River Nile. So this is what gave them the name Nilotics, you know, because it's kind of related to River Nile. So they are called Nilotics. So they include the Luo, the Choli, the Langi, and the Maasai. The Luo, the Choli, Langi, and the Maasai. They are all Nilotics. Let's look at the Hamites. So these are related to Asians, Arabs, and Europeans. They include the Somali, the Gala, and most of them are found in Kenya. So the Hamites are related to Asians, Arabs, and Europeans. And they include the Somali and the Gala and so many others. And most of them are found in Kenya. So now the other group is the Nilohamites. These are a group of pastoral communities. They originate from Ethiopia. They include the Tukana and the Iteso of Kenya and Uganda. The Nilohamites are a pastoral community. They originated from Ethiopia. They include the Tukana and the Iteso of Kenya and Uganda. So we have looked at four ethnic groups, the Bantu, the Nilotics, the Hamites, and the Nilohamites. So the tribes that we find in the Bantu, we have Banyaranda, Barundi, Baganda, Basoga from Uganda, the Kusumu and Nyamwezi of Tanzania, the Kikuyu and also Akamba of Kenya. Then the Nilotics, this is a group we said it entered East Africa by traveling along River Nile. And we said some of them are the Luo, Acholi, Langi, and the Maasai. Then the Hamites are also related to Asians, Arabs, and Europeans. And they include the Somali and the Gala. And most of them are found in Kenya. Then the Nilohamites, this is a group of pastoral communities. That means they love keeping cattle. When you talk about pastoral communities, these are people who love keeping cattle. And they originated from Ethiopia. They include the Tukana and the Iteso of Kenya and Uganda. Let us have a short break and we continue. So we were looking at the people of East Africa and we are looking at how they migrated to East Africa and we say they came from different direction. So now this brings me to this immigration and immigration. We are now going to look at immigration and immigration. So can you explain the meaning of immigration and immigration? What do you understand by those two words? Immigration and immigration. Can you write down the meaning of the two words? Are you there? Have you written something down? Okay. So this is what immigration and immigration is. So when people move from other countries to live in our country, it is called immigration. Immigration. And such people are called immigrants. Immigrants. So sometimes people f move out of the country to go and settle in other countries. We call that immigration. Immigration. So the people who have left our countries to settle in other countries are called immigrants. They are called immigrants. Let me repeat the whole thing. When people move from other countries to live in our country, it is called immigration because they have entered our country. They have left other countries and they have entered our country. And we call such people immigrants. Immigrants. So sometimes people move out of Rwanda and they go to settle in other countries. So when they leave Rwanda and they go to another country, we call that immigration. Immigration. Yeah? 
and the people who have left our country to settle in other countries are called immigrants. So that is the difference between two, immigration and immigration. Immigration is people entering in a country. When they come and enter into our country, then immigration is when people leave the country and go to settle in another country. So immigration is entering and immigration is exiting. It is leaving. So immigration is entering the country and immigration is exiting or leaving the country. So that is the difference between the two. Now, let us look at the causes and the effects of migration in East Africa. Now, this is migration, the movement of people. Movement of people. Migration is general, the movement of people. But then immigration and emigration. That is where um, immigration when people enter the country and immigration when people exit the country. So what are the causes of migration in East Africa? What causes people to move from one place to another? So these are some of the causes of migration. Migration is the movement of people. So why do people move from one place to another? One is to trade. People move to trade. Some people migrate because they want to trade elsewhere. This means they want to sell the products in another place which has market. There are places which has a lot of market where people are able to buy other people's commodities highly on a higher price. So people will have to move from one area to another because they want to trade their products. And also next, employment. Some people migrate in search of jobs. People will move to other places which have many job opportunities where they can earn a living. You know, people will always want to look for a place where they will settle, get a job, and earn a better living. Civil wars. Civil wars make people migrate to safer places where they can find peace and where they can be secure. So civil wars will cause people to live from one place to another because they are looking for peace where they can settle and be secure. Natural disasters, calamities like drought, famine, or diseases can cause people to migrate. Places which are affected by such problems, people will prefer to leave them. They will go to areas which do not have calamity, where there is no drought, where they will settle in peace and live comfortably. So people will move from one place to another. People can also migrate in search of better education opportunities. So education will make people move. People prefer to study in good schools and they can as well move to look for those better schools. You know, so people will always move in search of good educational opportunities. And lastly, population pressure. Whenever population increases in an area, people will want to move and look for a place which is not highly populated. And a place which is highly populated will be left for a place that is less populated, where people can settle comfortably and where people ca- will have enough land where they can carry out agriculture. So people will move because of population pressure. So people will move because of trade, where they want to buy and sell products. You know, People will move because of employment. They will look for better job opportunities. People will also move because of civil wars. If a place is affected by civil wars, people will leave that place. Also, if a place has natural disasters like droughts, diseases, people will leave that place. They will move to a place without natural disasters. And also people will move for education where they are looking for good schools. And lastly, people will move because of population pressure. If the place is highly populated, people will move from that place to a place which is less populated. Okay, let us have a short break and then we continue. Welcome back. We are looking at the causes of migration. So what are the effects of migration? What happens when people migrate, when they leave one place to another? What happens to the area where people go? And also what happens to the area where people have left? their original place. 
So we shall have positive and negative effects. So the positive effect, it increases interaction among people. It will promote good relations. When people move from one place to another, people will make friendship. They will be able to make so many friends. For instance, if people come from Uganda and come to Rwanda, people will make friends in Rwanda. And also if people in Rwanda come from here and they go to U.S., they will also make friends in U.S. because they have moved from one place to another. It also promotes cultural exchange among people. People will get to know different cultures. If people are moving and they interact with different cultures, they will get to know the different cultures of people and even respect them and love them so much. So negative effects of migration, one, it may lead to the spread of diseases. You know, especially if people may move because of the affected area. If a place has been affected by a sickness or a disease, if they leave that place to a place which doesn't have the disease, they may carry the disease from that place to that place which was not affected. So there can be easy spread of diseases. It can also lead to population increase or population decrease. A place that has been left will have population decrease. People will not be there. And a place where people have gone to settle, there will be population increase because many people will have gone there, so there will be population increase. It may also lead to conflicts and fighting over resources. If people move to a place which has resources, for instance, if there is a lot of land, people will fight for that land because they all want that land. There will be conflicts, there will be fighting over the resources. So a country may also lose qualified and skilled people, and the country will need those people. So if people go to look for better job opportunities, the other country where people have left, you know, you know, it will lose the people who are qualified and skilled because people have left that country to another place to look for jobs. You know, so the country may lose qualified and skilled people. So in conclusion, let me summarize the whole lesson. We need to know that East Africa is made up of different ethnic groups. And we looked at the Bantu, the Nilotics, the Hamites, and the Nilohamites. And the people of East Africa have been migrating from one place to another. So some leave their countries to other countries. So East Africa has also received people from other parts of the world. We can't say that people who come in East Africa are only from around East Africa. They also come from different parts of the world. So people may migrate because of population pressure, because of civil wars, because of trade, and also natural disasters. So migration in East Africa has resulted in a number of effects, such as increased interaction, population increase, conflicts among resources, like we had mentioned earlier. That is what we learned in the whole lesson. So now, for your homework, you're going to research about the transport and communication. Find out the types of transport that you use in your area. So children, thank you so much for paying attention. And our dear parents, thank you so much for assisting our, par our children. Thank you so much for assisting our children while they are learning at home. So hope you'll join me in the next lesson. Bye-bye.